Hey, how's it going? My name is Dan. I used to work at the biggest dealership in the country and now I teach fine folks like you how not to get fucked when buying a car. Now in this video, I want to talk to you about, actually not about buying a car, but a little piece of technology that I saw online, which I thought was really freaking amazing. I want to show you the video. I, this, is, this is not me at all. I wish I was that smart. This is going to be from their website. So let's take a look at it and then I'll tell you what the implications are because a lot of times where I've seen some other videos I'm getting excited if you can't tell I'm getting excited all right a lot of videos that I've seen online they have no implications they don't tell us what this actually means it's like they're telling us here there's a piece of technology but they don't tell us what it's going to be used for or what it's how it's going to change our lives all right let's get started Orbis Honda Type R Hybrid the Orbis ring wheel separates the stationary hub from the rotating rim and wheel. Offsetting the motor from the center creates a torque multiplying effect, reducing the power needed to start and stop the wheel. The patented three-pointed bearing spider reduces friction to one-fifth while doubling the structural strength of the wheel. Brake rotor weight is reduced by 60% and unsprung weight by 50%, enabling in-wheel motor installation without weight penalty. Orbis technology enables converting a two-wheel drive into a four-wheel drive without adding unsprung weight to the vehicle. We added a 31-pound 50 horsepower zero motorcycle brushless motor to each of the Honda Type R rear wheel assemblies, upgrading them from passive to independently powered wheels. Orbis designed custom parts to replace the factory wheel assembly and to remove excess weight for optimum operation and integration. All this became one bolt-on kit for ease of substitution. The Orbis assembly was tested for friction. The dynamic friction of the wheel with no load was a mere 4 watts. To get an idea of just how little this is, you can get as much as 10 watts of friction variance with a bicycle wheel and chain just by using different lubes. This hybrid vehicle has multiple benefits in relation to a factory configuration. We achieved a five times reduction in static and dynamic friction, as well as a 30% increase in mechanical braking efficiency due to a 30% decrease in brake temperatures. We created an all wheel drive gas electric hybrid type R, which has 100 added horsepower with minimal increase in curb weight. We improved zero to 60 times and increased torque by 40% improved front-to-rear weight bias and fuel economy while reducing emissions. We improved safety and control via lighter wheels and reduced inertia, improved traction via all-wheel drive, and, to top it off, a reduction in brake fade. The completed hybrid vehicle was road-tested in city and highway conditions using an infrared thermal camera to verify the decrease in brake temperatures. Orbis, driven to advance transportation technology. All right, was that pretty freaking awesome? I think it was. Now, let me go over a couple of details that they did not mention, but I, I know from other videos and other interviews that I've seen online and some things that I read, they just didn't mention a couple of things. So those things are torque vectoring because each wheel has its own motor. You can have torque vectoring for free. It's not a special feature that you have to add. It's not something that you have to compute or do something on top of this because each wheel is independent. The speed of each wheel can be independent. So you have torque vectoring right off the bat. Kind of cool, huh? Next one, region braking. Again, you get it for free because it's electric motor on each wheel. Everything is separate. Whenever you're braking, those motors will put charge back into the battery. Yes, you have to add a battery to have this thing going. You have to have like a 
uh, some kind of Tesla battery or some kind of electric battery on board on your car. But here's the best part. They didn't mention this, but I know from other research that I have done, they increased their torque with only two of these motors, only two motors by 40%. This is insane. Think about this. This like, is this not insane? I think it is. Now here's a couple of things that nobody talked about, which I'm gonna mention right now. First, this is absolutely amazing. However, we will not see this mass produced for another 25 to 35 years. And how do I know this? Very simple. Because when we go back and look at technological advancements and when they were created, the time from the creation to implementation took about 50 years. 40, 40 years, 50 years, sometimes even longer. For example, LEDs were available 67 or 70 something years ago. Only right now in 2018, we're getting LEDs implemented on cars as a standard feature, all right? That's 60 years. I'm cutting that time in half to 25, 30, 35 years. So we're gonna see this, you know, by the time you're gonna be really old, this might exist on standard cars. However, if you wanna get this on your car and increase your horsepower and increase your torque by 40% and the horsepower by 100%, each wheel adds 50 horsepower. So you got 50, you got 50, that's 100. So that Civic Type R is gonna be somewhere around 400 horsepower. Kind of cool without adding extra fuel, without increasing turbo pressure, without doing anything to the engine. The engine is running the same. You literally have extra power coming from more wheels. Well, not, not more wheels, but more wheels actually turning and putting power down instead of just turning with the car. Make sense? Okay. They also mentioned that is 100% impervious to dirt, grime. What about rocks? They said it's 100% submergible, it's waterproof and blah, blah, blah. What about rocks? I'm sure it's not gonna be a big problem, but from what I've seen, you have gears, the teeth of gears are completely exposed. So if a rock gets in here, uh, uh, the whole thing is fucked up, considering that it's $10,000. So it's $5,000 per wheel, and you gotta have at least two of them, right? So that's $10,000 and it's super easy to install. He said that anybody can install this in their garage. Now my question is, if I wanna take that 300 HP to 400 HP Honda Civic Type R, is it gonna cost me $10,000 or can I do it for less? I think I could do it for less. It's only 100 horsepower, you know, better turbo, ECU retune, different type of gas and you know, and where, we're on to 400 horsepower. I don't think the traditional way is gonna cost me $10,000. I think it's gonna be a lot less. Bigger turbo, more boost, better gas, add a couple of more things here and there, and I think it's gonna be less than that. However, here's the cool thing. Because you're kind of turning this car into a hybrid, because if there's a huge battery, and you have 400 horsepower in the same vehicle, so you have a really interesting dynamic. Whenever you wanna be in city, just slow driving, I mean, you're gonna be getting 40, 45 miles to a gallon. Whenever you wanna floor it, you have 400 horsepower ready. You have extra 40% torque ready. So this is really freaking cool. Considering that this is only $10,000, I mean, I'm actually really impressed. The only downside, we're not gonna see this for another 25, 30 years. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up below and click the subscribe button over my head or watch one of those two videos if you wanna see more money saving tips about cars. This is Dan with 60 Minute Car. I'm signing out and I'll see you on the internet.